got ourselves Classroom of the Elite light novel cut content for the most recent episode from Mr. Baseless Yupin. Let's see what he has to say. Classroom of the Elite Season 3 Episode 9 is here, finally finishing up Volume 10 along with starting Volume 11, okay. which is the final special. Now, you know this is just a light novel cover, and I have been asking, what's Mi-chan doing? Is he wearing Gucci belts? Is Koenji wearing Gucci belts right now? Now, this is a power couple I could get behind. I have no idea why the fuck Mi-chan and Koenji will be together, but like, you're gonna put them in a light novel page cover? I mean, alright, let them cook! Special exam twenty. What the fuck do they have in common? Like, like, straight up! What the fuck do they have in common? I just... I don't know. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. ...of the first year. And in terms of cut content, we're off to a pretty decent... Oh my god, dude. Pseudo's and EK's faces, their faces were super scuffed last episode. It's not the biggest deal, but Pseudo got done dirty last episode. Yet somewhat concerning start. You guys will understand what I'm talking about later in the video. Though that's only talking about the cut content. Because my god, did mm. this episode look horrible? Like it's genuine. Oh, oh, I thought we were gonna say the Skishido fight looked cool, but even Narakoji's face here looks a little derpy compared to his normal face. It's only hard to believe that such a popular light novel ended up with an adaptation like this. But let's not focus on that and dive in. <laughs> and he's right. He's objectively correct, it's just that the anime just succeeds, keeps continuing to do well, you know? Like, Baseless Yupin is probably correct, but it's like, the anime just continues to do well, even with the scuffed- Like, even right now, look at Koji's face, he looks so fucking derpy, dude. ...into all the cut content, and change- Skishiro looks good! Skishiro- Arashi? I have no reference point, right? I don't know what Skishiro is supposed to look like, so I'm just gonna assume he looks, you know, fleshed out here. Other characters look very wonky. Just for this week's episode. Starting with the Arisu meeting, when they meet up, Arisu first apologizes to Kiyo and tells him that she had no choice but to target him okay. because someone high up ordered her to expel Kiyo. What? Arisu was ordered? Oh. This whole entire season 3 content of Arisu trying to start shit with Kiyo is because she was ordered to do it? Oh, oh, that's kind of huge details that I not sure if I should know. What was it mentioned in the anime? When did the anime said that? Which episode? Skishiro said it. Did Skishiro confirm it? Only in the vote exam? Huh. I see. So maybe it didn't start from the mountain arc, but like just like the the voting exam, just that one exam, huh? Just in the vote, huh? Shit. And Skishiro ordered, huh? Okay. Okay, damn, I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Though sadly for Yamagod, he was the one who ended up getting expelled. Bye-bye. And the reason is because he tripped her up during the mountain special exam. Arisu tells... <laughs> she said, nah, don't worry about it. But then Yamagod fucked up and he was like, huh, that's a Kiyanagi girl is so cute, but she's quite the klutz. And EK is like, bro, you fucking bumped into her. He knew that the exam was originally going to only allow classes to send criticism words to other classes and there wasn't going to be any reward like the protection point, which would make it extremely easy to target and expel any student from different classes, letting Kyo know just to what extent he was being targeted by hmm. by someone high up. But the Skishiro, right? Skishiro, who is a tool of Papa Koji, right? Again, this is just level one thinking, the most like the, the most intuitive way of thinking, which doesn't really use critical thinking. You're just assuming it because it just seems like first it. First year teachers, especially Mashima, who is the first year class A teacher, yeah. fought against the new chairman. Really? Mashima was on our, well, not on our side per se, but he was like against it. I mean, if I were the teachers and some random dude came out of fucking nowhere and replaced Sakai and his dad, I'd be like, this is bullshit for too. For students and managed to change some of the rules. Okay. Arisu also talks about how Yahiko ended up with one less crit- Yahiko is uh, Baldi's right hand man. This is on vote than what she had expected. Because that was from Koji, right? Someone was saying Koji sent Yahiko like a positive vote just for Baldi, right? And wonders if Kyo was the one who sent him yeah. that praise vote. Kyo did, right? To which he replies that he did. Okay, he okay, okay. He says that he knew Katsuragi was a red herring, so he sent his vote to Yahiko even though he knew it wouldn't change anything. It's just like a little, I don't know. It's just like a... 
a little, little nice thing for Baldi. It's like, yeah, he's gone, but it's like, you know, I'll, I'll still pull him for him. You know, it's like, it's not going to change the outcome, but it's like, it's the, it's the thought that matters, right, Baldi? Then we finally have the entrance of Tsukishiro. I'm telling you, man, anytime in this anime, wherever nearby, you know, uh, uh, a stairway, some shit's about to go down, especially if there's sunset lighting. And usually, sunset lighting's in other animes like rom-com, it's like romance moments or like more epic moments, but like the sunset lighting in this anime is so much more sinister. I don't know how to describe it. It's a lot more red, you know what I mean? And let's just say his entrance was way more menacing in the light. Dude, characters in anime that never opened their eye, like Brock or other, or other characters, you know? Whenever they do, it's when shit gets real. So like, there's gonna come a moment when Skishiro actually like breaks, you know, it, 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 he's ha he has a very good poker face on right now, right? You, you can't really read him, he's kind of smiling. He's not gonna open his eyes. Dude, when he actually opens his eyes, oh, I know that moment's gonna come and it's gonna be fucking epic, right? Novel. Plus the wonky animation did not help the intensity of the scene at all. Also, another major difference during this scene is that when Tsukishiro kicks Arisu's Koji caught her. Kane, he manages to catch Arisu yeah. and stop her from falling, yeah. which leads to him getting hit with a punch from Tsukishiro. Oh! The anime just lets Arisu fall to the ground for some reason. <laughs> Tsukishiro is getting expelled next. Now, do you think Arisu is gonna be like that motherfucker? You saw how petty she was, but like, is Tsukishiro someone that Arisu could quote unquote expel? I don't know. How? We could get a fucking petition? And every student could sign it saying Skishiro, you know, sexually assaulted a student? <laughs> and we could try to get him fired like that? I don't know. Back when I was in college, there were some really shitty instructors where we were like, holy fuck, they don't teach us anything. They're just straight up reading off the fucking lecture slides. So we had a petition. The student council, like the, the body, the government, that like, you know, uh, I guess kind of like works on our behalf. We all like wrote our signatures. All like 50 students wrote down a signature and our lab instructor got fucking canned in the next year. But like... I don't know if that's possible. I don't know if that's possible in this anime with Kishiro, man. Though I wouldn't be surprised if the reason they did this was because it was too complex for the studio to animate. Now, why did Aona Koji actually, like, get fucked in the anime compared to the light novel? Yes, the light novel, he took a punch, but he caught Arisu. In the anime, he didn't. It almost looked like Kishiro just, like, over, just overrode everybody, right? So the anime is trying to intentionally let us know that Kishiro is built diff. Like, that's, this is obviously in favor of Tsukishiro, right? It makes him look really good. I mean, Tsukishiro choking Ayano Koji genuinely looks worse than the season 3 trailer. It's literally like that meme of flirting versus- Oh! That- So, that was what that scene was in the trailer. Tsukishiro was supposed to choke him, but the anime didn't really make the episode yet, right? That's just the trailer content, and, and then we came up with this, right? So- Riz versus sexual harassment. Harassment. This Didn't they do the same shit with uh, Ryuin? Because Aona Koji was like um, punching down in a trailer in season 2. But he was on a rooftop. But the people were like, nah, that's actually in the gym scene. Is that correct? This adaptation is truly something special. When a highly anticipated scene looks worse than the pre-animated trailer. Damn. But with that, we're finally done with volume 10. And now we move on to volume 11. I don't know. I felt like as an anime only, just seeing that scene, I was super hyped. I thought it was fucking amazing. But again, I don't know any better. You know what I mean? I, I just, I don't know what to compare it to, right? So as an anime only, when I saw the Skishiro scene, I thought that was, she was, was fucking hype. I was like, God damn, Skishiro took out Arisu and then immediately fucking put his like, you know, his elbow onto Anakoji. That's insane, right? But light novel he was supposed to choke him you know and he's, he punched him too apparently so i'm like shit i guess with that knowledge it kind of makes it look bad the volume starts with a monologue from arisu which was completely skipped in the anime okay we also get a flashback which they have to show at some point because it's really important arisu so flashback to talk about the flashback during her monologue she talks about how she completely disagrees with the white room and she believes that it's impossible hmm. to create an artificial genius but you did. Anakoji's right there. Unless you're saying that he's not an artificial genius. I thought that he's pretty much as perfect as it can be. But I guess Koji does have some flaws. What's his flaws? I mean, why was he putting D class again in the first year? What was his defect? It's his... Did he intentionally try to do it? But does the school also knows the profiles of each character, right? They already immediately profile them and they know 
what their defects are and their places like that. So it's not like Ayano Koji intentionally made him look bad during whatever screening, right? They kind of knew that he was like socially not really there. He just looks as everyone as tools and therefore he was put in D class, right? Or is it really the fact that Ayano Koji intentionally got a low mark in the screening exam and he was placed in D class? I don't know. But anyways, I thought the Koji was, you know, an artificial genius. She thinks that a person's potential is determined the moment they're born and there's nothing you can do to alter that. I disagree. I think that to a certain degree, what she's talking about is this innate talent, right? This innate like, um, like geniuses or prodigies. I think everyone has a lot of different definitions, but it's like, yes, raw talent is exactly what she's talking about. And that is, I guess, like um, nurture, nature versus nurture, right? So this is like the environment versus like the genetics. So the genetic part determines that talent immediately. But then the environment that you grow up can kind of modify that and enhance you so i feel like no i kind of disagree i feel like the environment that you're grown up in specifically the wild room can accept, it, of course it can change you it can make you into a fucking sociopath like anakoji yes so so Aris was saying anakoji at birth was like a normie and through the white room he became this like artificial genius but it's fake because Arisa didn't need the white room and she became just like that i don't know she also believes that even if a student of the white room turns out to be exceptional, okay. it was because of their DNA and not the product of white room's teaching. Ha! Huh, okay, very interesting. So the white room never actually altered Aona Koji. Even though I'd say obviously it kind of did, but she's saying like the most significant... He was already fucked from the beginning, is what she's saying. The DNA, the initial when you were born, that already impacted him. He would have already been a perfect human regardless of the white room teachings i don't really know but okay arisa thinks that it wasn't really the teachings that changed Diana koji to be like that he was always a dna teachings that's basically all i can tell you guys all about right the monologue okay. without going into important stuff that's likely gonna get shown later in the anime that monologue seems very interesting i do love it when people talk about like innate talent versus like work ethic right it's like who wins you know, someone that's exceptionally gifted and doesn't really try hard or someone that has no talent but tries really hard, right? Obviously, I think the common argument there is like the person who put in the work will quite often come on top of the person that didn't try. But then it's like, all right, what if someone just as someone works just as hard, even though they're also gifted on top of that, then you got to probably give it to them instead. Then we move on to the second chapter of this volume, which was once again, completely skipped in the anime. Okay. We get a flashback to when the class vote special exam was being discussed by the faculty members where we see Mashima trying to convince Tsukishiro into changing the exam, talking about how it's unfair for the students to be forced to expel someone just because none of the first years have been expelled so far. After their discussion, Tsukishiro talks about how they're planning to hold a school festival next year where they're festival. planning to invite politicians, journalists, and people who know about the White Room. No, he says the school. The school. That, oh, that was a, that was a, oh, Jesus. You can't just say people who know what the, that is a big fuck up, Mr. Faceless. He, he did clarify, he, he did clarify it's the school, okay? But okay, we're gonna have a festival and um, big hot shots are gonna come by, okay? All right. Which, if you put two and two together, means that- Is this Koji dad in the light novel? It's probably him, right? Papa Koji might yeah, be coming to school yeah. once again. Okay. After the- I don't want, I, I'm not asking for answers right now, but I really wonder what kind of job Papa Koji has. Like, I'm not talking about, like, it, like he, he probably is, like, the director of the White Room or, like, the, like, the, the, the CEO, the founding president, the founder, whatever. But I wonder if he's, like, has some other hobbies beyond that. If he's already in the Japanese government, if he already rules something else. I don't really know. Once again, after the entire meeting is over, Chawashira calls Mashima and Hoshimiya Sensei to talk about how they feel about the new director and the unreasonable special exam. The teachers hate him? After that, Chabashira and Hoshimiya start fighting over whose class might be class A by graduation. Oh. And Mashima mentions that they shouldn't involve their personal feelings into their class and hints that something happened during their student days, which is why Chabashira and Hoshimiya have beef with each other. I didn't really... So something happened back in the past. Well, I think it's kind of been hinted in since like season one. But like, Chabashira and Hoshima, they have beef. I thought that they were just kind of like um, friends that were kind of being sundered to each other. But they actually have beef. It might not be actual like, you know, I hate you kind of beef. It's probably like old rivalry, right? 
Then we finally have something that did get adapted oh. and that is the announcement of the special exam and its rules. If you guys didn't understand not gonna lie, I don't give a fuck about the exams or the rule explanations. I think in Classroom Elite, even though these exams are very important, the explanation of the rules and stuff is the most boring part for me. And what the exam is about. Sorry! It's basically, each class picking 10 events to participate in, 5 of them being bluffs, and during the day of the exam, the school will randomly pick 7 events out of the 10 real- Yeah, 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 I just wait for someone in the comment section to fucking summarize it for me. I'm just clocked out whenever they're explaining this shit to me in the anime, dude. Once both classes ended up choosing. <laughs> and the commander of each class decides who participates in what events and how the commander can influence each event depends on the rules of the event. And that's basically the special exam simplified. There are obviously a lot more rules and details if you're interested. But I'm not nah. gonna bore you guys with ah, that. Who cares, man? Who, ah, who gives a fuck, right? It's at the end of the day, the most important scene is gonna be the chess match between Arisu and Aina Koji, right? Proxy chess match. That, that's all you guys have to care about. Everything else doesn't matter. You're just gonna see random fucking fights and we're gonna say, wow, they won. Wow, okay, whatever. Though the anime completely skipped on what the rewards for the exam are. The rewards is that you don't get expelled. Basically, you get 30 class points for every oh. event you win at, which gets subtracted from the losing class. With class points that takes from the other class that's actually really good and the class who wins the most events gets a bonus 100 class points damn dln also shows us the current class points what in the fuck yo that is a class is so ahead holy shit honestly i didn't think that we're actually not doing too bad compared to b class i thought the gap would be way higher but we're basically at class um, C right now, right? And D class, which is Ryu in class, they're lagging behind, okay. It's of each class, and as you can see, depending on the result of the exam, class C can either end up reaching class B, e, or they might end up going back to D. I think, aren't we supposed to go back to D though? Because Anakoji stated twice now, first time in the season two ending, and Christmas Eve with Ryu in, I'm gonna get in, at the end in second year, right? at, at the first year, sorry, we're gonna get to class C, they're gonna drop back down, cause, you know, Kushida, we're gonna expel her. That's, that's, that's what he said. And then in season 3, he also confirmed it again, right? That we're gonna, I'm gonna get Kushida out. But like, are we gonna, something has to happen in this special exam, huh? If what Arakoji said was true, and if he's still trying to do it, then we should somehow drop back down to class D. But we can't lose the fucking chess match against Arisu. How is this gonna happen? Maybe that's a red herring. Maybe I'm focusing too much on that one dialogue and it's actually never gonna happen because it does seem like Kushida will not get expelled but will be a long time player at this rate. After that, we move on to the lottery to choose your opponent. When Kyo came as the leader, Shabashira was surprised that he volunteered himself and was happy that Kyo might take things seriously this time around. <laughs> Yes, yes, the cancer is there, but it's in remission. It's not spreading. It's just kind of there. We're kind of like living with it. It's fucking annoying, but it's like sometimes she's helpful. I don't fucking know, man. Another thing the anime cut out was the fact that there were two computers in the room they choose their opponents. What? And those computers are going to be used by the commanders of each class so they can assign participants of the events from oh, there. Okay. Also, the commander can only give instructions to one participant per event but aside from those things, the scene was pretty much the same. One instruction per event. Okay, I don't think that should be too limiting. I, at the end of the day, the most important event is the chess match, right? Now we move on to the K scene. First up. Did you hear that? Mr. Yupin included a Yahoo here. Listen, listen very carefully. Those things, the scene was pretty much the same. Now we move on to the K scene. There it was. First up, he asks her about what the strengths and weaknesses of the girls in the class are, so he can make plans for the exam. Strength and weaknesses of the girls. It sucks to fucking admit it. But Kushida really is one of our strongest girls, huh? Fuck. Fuck. I gotta admit it. She is a top contender. She's a player, bro. She's good at this game. Kushida, Suzune. Who are some other girls? K, obviously K. But other than that, there really isn't other girls that really stands out so far. Michan is getting a little bit more of the spotlight, right? But like other girls like Shinohara, Masushita, Sakura, they don't really do anything. Yeah, Mi Michan is... Well, they better be careful with this, right? Because, again, I explained to you why I hate Sakura. Because she fucking wasted my time in Season 1 and nothing has really paid off since that in Season 2 or Season 3. 
If Michan is slowly getting the introduction, if the, if the same shit happens where Michan gets a lot of screen time and nothing fucking comes of it, I would I, I'm gonna shit on Michan too, season four. But I feel like all right, if Michan actually pops off, I'd be like, hey, let's fucking go, Michan. Along with asking her about some other stuff about the class, then we finally have Kyo giving her the necklace. Wow. One difference during the scene was that Kyo was genuinely thinking that K hates the necklace and was planning. That K hates the necklace. She did say it's 10 out of 100. She rated it 10 out of 100. Get her a box of chocolates instead. It's actually quite. Nah, fuck the box of chocolate. She deserves a fucking box of fucking cough syrup medicine, dude. Quite funny that even the White Room masterpiece was oblivious to K's tsundere antics. Which makes sense because would the White Room teach you about how to raise people? Well, the White Room should teach you how to be like your social game needs to be on point, but like some things. Like the human heart, like understanding the human heart like this romance. Would the white room be able to teach you like that? I thought that's what Koji was lacking because he is from the white room. Even though he's supposed to be the perfect human, this artificial genius, he just doesn't understand what love or like other more irrational human things are. Even though you would assume white room would be able to kind of break that down and teach people how to manipulate other people's hearts like that, right? Moving on, another thing the anime cuts out is multiple scenes of people trying to talk with Hirata, but he never responds to anyone and always <laughs> looks depressed. And he told Michan to fuck off. Slowly, day by day people stop trying to talk to him and even Horikita tells everyone to leave him alone. And the only one who hasn't given up on him is Michan. Michan, you deserve better. And Michan, I just saw you on with Koenji in the cover 11, bro. Fuck Hirata, let's go Koenji. And she continues to try talking to him every single day. <laughs> and the reason he shouted at her was so she could finally leave him alone and let Terrible. him be. Terrible. Hirata L. Hirata fucking L, dude. They also cut out Koenji's reaction to all this drama. Oh, oh. And this man does. Why on earth are there so many problem children in our class at Koenji? <laughs> I considered telling him that he was a problem child himself, but thought better of it. <laughs> Koenji is... Is this kind of a, his own defect right now? Not being self-aware that he is a problem child? Well, he's intentionally trying to be a problem child, right? Right? Everyone else is kind of lashing out, doing their own thing. But I feel like Koenji is doing it intentionally because he said that he'd never contribute. I don't know, man. Does not care at all. And wonders why there are so many problem children in the class. And Kyo thinks about telling Koenji that he's one himself, but decides not to do it. I mean, that statement doesn't uh, consider that... It doesn't confirm that Koenji doesn't consider himself not a problem child, right? He just says, why are there so many? He could be saying that he's in it too. Moving on, we get an Ayano Koji group scene where they all discuss about a lot of stuff about the exams along with feeling bad for Kyo that he's basically forced to be the commander. And Kyo is really glad that everyone doesn't know that he actually wanted to be the commander this time mm. around and intentionally chose class A as the opposing class. After all this, the anime skips multiple chapters and puts multiple. the Manabu scene and Class A's event reveal in this episode. Right. I am genuinely hoping that they are rearranging this stuff instead of straight up skipping multiple chapters. Though the Manabu scene does have some cut content as well. First up, Kiyo genuinely failing to... A long time ago, Suzune used to be completely different from how she is now. She was the kind of child who smiled a lot. I can't believe that she smiled. Susan is smiling. Wait, she smiled a lot? It was useless. I honestly couldn't picture it. There's one instance that Susan smiles, and that's in the filler episode, season one, the pool episode, right? At the end of the episode, she reflects on the day about how fun it was, and then she kind of smiles, and that's the end of the episode. But that's not canon, right? Is it canon? Actually, people say that it was canon because Kay was supposed to be one declaring what Susan said on the diving board. Anyways, she never smiled after that. Imagine Horikita being a person who smiled a lot. Then Manabu talks about another thing about Suzune that was completely different about her oh. and says that it's gonna be his final metric to see if Suzune truly changed or not. Another thing is Manabu. Horikita Manabu wasn't some idiotic doting brother who fawned over a sister. The exact opposite. He shit on her. I mean, anyways, he meant what he said. I was also impressed by the height of the potential that Horikita had in many ways. Why though? Was it because of what her brother said to me? Suddenly a thought crossed my mind. What was I supposed to do here at the school? No, rather, what did I want to do? I suddenly felt like I understood. This is an Aonokoji monologue. What was I supposed to do here at the school? No, rather, what did I want to do? I suddenly felt like I understood. Huh. 
And this has to go with what Manabu was saying about how Susan is changing and about how Ayana Koji might be influencing her. So is Ayana Koji here realizing like what I want to do has to do with being some kind of shadow leader and raising people up to their full potentials? I am I interpreting this wrong? Because if this is coming right after talking about how Ayana Koji was able to develop Suzune into this good person now, right? And now he's asked, now he's starting to realize like, what do I want to do? And then it's like, oh yeah. I felt like I understood. I don't know. Nabu's words about Horikita having a really big impact on Ayanu Koji uh, that definitely should not have been skipped huh. because it's a massive turning point for his character. Turning point! Somehow, like I've been doing so far, but taking things seriously. Oh ho! I never thought you'd say something like that from Manabu. I bump into Horikita's brother on accident, but our conversation would have a huge impact on my life. It'd be a long, long time before I knew whether or not my hunch was right. Taking what seriously? This monologue is kind of vague, but if this is coming right after, if Anakoji's realization here about what he wants to do is coming right after Manabu's discussion, conversation about Suzune and her development, does Anakoji seriously want to like change other people for the better? Is he realizing that I have potential to, you know, use people as tools, but I could also genuinely treat them better and raise them up instead of just using them as tools. Is that what he's thinking here? So maybe talking to Manabu and meeting with Suzune is the exact last thing Koji's dad wants him to get exposed to. I talked about how K, in, like, like interacting with K is probably the worst thing for Ana Koji, right? From his dad's perspective, because the white room is supposed to strip all that human bullshit, see people as tools, get ahead, that's all that matters. But by hanging out with normies, he's gonna, you know, slowly kind of lose that edge. You know what I mean? He's gonna become a little bit more human. And after talking with Manabu now, he's starting to realize, shit, maybe I shouldn't just use people as tools, but treat them a little bit more genuinely. And help build them up. So this is like a turning point from that, huh? And making him realize something really important about himself. And that is all the court content for this week's episode. Okay. Uh, we didn't get a t uh, Mr. Baseless Yupin didn't talk about the um, Skichiro and Koji Papa's. Well, maybe, maybe he did, but there's something extra I want to talk about is I talked about in the AH Brandon video, but the idea that Koji's dad sends Skichiro here because he realizes that the White Room, if Ana Koji won't return to the White Room, then why don't we bring the White Room to the school? So now. Koji's dad, it's all according to his plan. He's going to send more of his people to the school. And instead of the white room, it's going to be the white school. And Anna Koji, whether he likes it or not, is participating in his white room experiment. I don't fucking know. I, 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 I like that theory, though. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Check out some of my other... Y'all know what to do. Please go give Mr. Baseless Yupin a sub to his channel. Like his video if you did. He always gives us great summaries about what happens in each episode. The animation quality was definitely wonky. And hearing about what happened with the Skishiro scene... Kind of saddens me, but as an anime only, I did really enjoy this, and I'm really excited to see what the next last four episodes of the season will be.